shipyard. So shipyard allows you to spin up Kubernetes clusters locally in Docker with console service mesh automatically installed. This is a pretty straightforward, simple process. It takes about a minute to create a cluster. So step one is to install the shipyard tool. So I can do that just by going to shipyard.demo.js and I'm going to uh, just run this command here. So running, running that command, it asks me for my password because it's going to install a binary into user local bin and it's going to put all of the configuration into my home folder um, dot shipyard. So I've got all of that installed. The next thing to do to create my Kubernetes cluster in Docker is to run yard up. So if I run Docker PS, I've got nothing running and I'm just going to run yard up and that's going to create me a cluster with the sensible defaults and it's going to use K3S to create that cluster. Shipyard can also create fully blown Kubernetes distro clusters using kind, but K3S is a little quicker. I'm going to let this run in real time. It takes about 45 seconds for Shipyard to create the cluster. So what it's going to do is it's going to cache all of the images locally inside of the, the Kubernetes cluster, and it's going to try and retrieve those from your local Docker registry, which means you don't need an internet connection to be able to run Shipyard. Shipyard's already created the Kubernetes cluster, and it's currently running the HashiCorp Helm chart to install console. This is going to set up a single node console server with an agent on each worker node. Yeah, Shipyard only creates a single node kube cluster, fine for development purposes. And you can see there it took 19 seconds to create the console server. We're just waiting for the console client to start. And there we go, it's done. So you can see here the Shipyard has automatically exported the Kubernetes configuration file. And I'm just going to set that to my kubeconfig environment variable. And now I can interact with Kubernetes. So kubectl get pods, you can see there, I've got my console cluster running on Kubernetes. If I look at Docker, you can see there, this is my, my um, shipyard cluster. What shipyard also does is it exports the console UI to localhost 8500 by default, all of this is configuration configurables and also the Kubernetes dashboard. So authentication is disabled. I can just hit skip there, but you can see you've got the kube dashboard. The console API is available at the, the default location of localhost 8500. So if you've got the console tool installed, you can just immediately use that to start interacting with things. So we've got that up and running. We've got Shipyard, we've got console service mesh running on Kubernetes. Let's install a simple application. So I'm gonna use this application which demonstrates traffic splitting and I'm going to um, add some central configuration. I'm going to add a service which I can then use to access my application. And I've just got a couple of simple um, pods. So let's run that. So we're going to do kubectl apply dash f traffic splitter. This example is also in the example folder in the uh, shipyard folder, which is in your home. We can see that that has applied. It's creating, Kubernetes is creating those containers. While that creates, you can see they're updating in the dashboard there, and they're also updating inside of console. So that's all healthy. So we can access this now. So to access this, we need to, to be able to um, gain access to the service. So if I look at kubectl get services, I can see that I've got this cluster IP web service. To make this accessible to my local machine, what I can do is I can use the yard expose command. I'm going to give it a service name and that's going to use the Kubernetes convention. So I could have actually used a pod here too. I'm going to give it 
set the port. So I want to expose locally 9090 to the Kubernetes port 9090. And that's going to run there. So now when I curl localhost 9090, you can see I'm now hitting the service inside of Kubernetes. I can also run that inside of my web browser. And you can see there that I've got my fake service running. So let's see how I can actually configure traffic splitting with console then on that. So I've got this traffic splitter configuration. And this is just going to set a weight of 50% between two of my different services. So how do I apply that? Console config write and I'm going to specify my HCL file there. So now when I go over to my web browser and I refresh, you can see that I'm splitting between the API version one and the API version two. Super simple tool for developing with console and Kubernetes. Hope you like it. To clean up, well, all I have to do is yard down and that's going to clean up the Kubernetes cluster and remove everything. So it's perfectly possible that you can just spin up these clusters up and down and destroy the state, which is really, really great when you're testing things out. Thanks for watching.